Champions Cup Sunday games. Interesting set of games. There are three of them on the Sunday. Um, yeah, a couple of the Irish teams uh, playing. And uh, Northampton looking to do a job. It's an interesting one because they're out, they're out. These two guys are still very much in. So I think if there is a game to watch, it is probably that Racing against Munster game. But uh, there are still things to like about the other two as well. I will start with Leinster hosting Lyon. Now, Leinster, the only team thus far, this is prior to the Saturday games being played, that have qualified. They are a certainty to go through. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see their team selection and that they haven't taken the foot off the gas. There's still all the big guns you would expect to be playing are still playing in this game so clearly they either want to prove a point or ensure they qualify as high as they can whatever it is uh, the fans at the RDS should have something to cheer about or perhaps it's just because the last time they played in France last year it was 13 to 6 so it was far from a convincing win for uh, for Lens to kind of comfortable without being really kind of convincing and Lyon like, although they're doing a bit rubbish in Europe this year, 1-1-3 one, one, losses compared to Leinster's perfect record of 4-0, and oh, um, they're doing all right in the, the top 14, so mentally you would have thought they're, um, they're in a fairly strong position. But anyway, we'll see how they go. Uh, in terms of the lineups, like I mentioned, there's some, you still got the big names, Henshaw, Ringrose in the midfield, uh, Lama, James Lowe, uh, Ross Burns playing, Dave Carney's playing on the other wing, McGrath uh, is at nine, Kian Healy, um, Tyg, Tyg Furlong, James Tracy. Interesting that he's starting ahead of Sean Cronin, but I haven't been watching the Pro 14 much, so I'm not sure if that's been the way of things. Uh, Toner and Fadi's captain in the second row, Ruddick, Van der Fleer, and Deegan make out the back row. Interesting, Rob Carney's on the bench, Jameson Gibson Park's on the bench, so Andrew Porter mentioned Sean Cronin already he's on the bench so uh, it's a it's a tough looking task facing Lyon but they're not without their own kind of you know big hitters interesting to see Etienne Oosthuizen uh, is at number seven I've only really seen him in the second row from memory um, yeah Nakatathi is playing uh, Regard is captain at 12 they've I don't know if it's just rotated, but you got Tui Sova on the bench. You got Hidalgo Klein on the bench. Lombe on the bench. Halafanua on the bench. I feel like there's a bit on the bench uh, for Leon, but... Yeah, hey, um, they're doing well in the top 14, so... I guess you wouldn't... You wouldn't blame them for rotating it up a bit for a trip over to Dublin to play a Leinster team, which is just in cracking form. Interestingly, the BBC said that Leinster is on an eight-match winning run for Champions Cup pool games and they've never won nine in a row so this could be a good chance for them to to set a new record anyway uh the next one oh I should mention uh Leinster 23 point favorites according to rugby forecasts algorithm the bookies have got Leinster by a whopping 40 points 4-0 so they're saying at home Leinster are pretty much uh, cut above and based on the recent records it's kind of hard to deny that but then again like I said last time 13 points to 6 over in France a lot closer than 40 points we will see uh, the next one it's Northampton up against Benetton it's another one that was pretty close it didn't get much closer uh, last time it was uh, Northampton 35 Benetton 32 over in Italy it was a Dan Bigger kick at the end it was after full time that he had to take that kick step up to the plate or to the kicking tee, and um, as he's like to do in the pressure moments, came through to get the team the win. Uh, he is not playing this week, though. Uh, James Grayson is starting at 10 for the Saints. Uh, I believe he's being rested because he's had injuries, or at least a bit of, like he played through an injury the other week. So, uh, yeah, he gets a break in this one. Uh, it's a tough one for Northampton because they're, I mean, Benetton are out. They're, they're already done, but Northampton are two wins and two losses. Uh, happens when you play Leinster, but they're on nine points, so they could potentially get a five 
point win here to put them on uh, 14. And then they've got one remaining game against Lyon, which if they go ahead and win, they're still well within uh you know the realms of possibility of going through as uh, as one of the qualifiers like the second uh, the second team to qualify so they're still very much alive but they they do need to get a win here preferably uh, a bonus point win so they seem to have picked a fairly strong side in in search of that um Matsavesi, van Vake and hill are the front row Ratuna Yarrow was there. Courtney Laws is playing in the second, uh, sorry, in the back row this time. Lewis Ludlam. Tamana Harrison's captain at eight. Uh, Hutchinson's playing at 12. Naira Bora is playing on the left wing. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot to like about the Northampton side, too. And they're not, they're not giving up, I guess. Um, I'm sure they would like to go through. Rhinox on the bench. Owen Franks on the bench. Ben Franks on the bench. So. Yeah, there's a bit of a Kiwi connection to that team as well. Maybe I should, should be cheering for Northampton. Uh, for Benetton, speaking of Kiwi connection, uh, Jaden Hayward's a fullback. Uh, but a whole bunch of Italian uh, internationals. Ruzza is one of my kind of favorite Italian players. So good to see him play in a second row this week. This week. Um, Duvanaka and Allen are the 19 combo. Monte Iwane is on the left wing. Sato on the right. Um, yeah, Pasquale's there. Quaglio's there. Hami Fiver. He was in blockbusting form in the Champions Cup recently. I feel like Benetton's record doesn't quite do them justice. I feel like they've been better value for that, but still, uh, just the one win for them. So, yep, hopefully they put up a good fight. But like I said, Northampton definitely be going for the bonus point. Uh, they are 18 point favorites according to the rugby forecast algorithm and 17 point favorites by the bookmakers. So, whichever way you look at it, they're favored to win pretty pretty well and as i said nine points two games to go against them and leon no reason they can't go through and pull one as the second qualifier um especially with some of the other teams in some of the other pools not looking that good the second qualifier so um yeah we'll see the last one yeah, this is a big one uh as i said i think if you're gonna watch a game this is probably the game to watch because saracens are playing ospreys in um in this pool four round, like they're playing on Saturday. And these guys are playing on Sunday. Now, the big problem for Munster at the moment is that draw, which is that one there in the middle. They drew against uh, Racing, and it was when they played uh, over in Ireland, and it was 21 apiece. That could be costly. Remember I talked about Northampton potentially going through. Some of the other second qualifiers maybe not doing that well. I mean... This still could potentially go Saracens and Racing though too, or it could be Munster depending on what happens. But I think if Saracens give uh, Ospreys a bit of a hiding like they are picked to do, then Munster really, really, really could use uh, a win here. So those three teams are still very much alive. Uh, Racing's on 17 points, three wins and a draw. Munster's on 11, two wins, a draw and a loss. So like I mentioned, they're, um, they're in second for the minute, but... Ospreys are in all likelihood going to lose to to Saracens at the weekend. So, yeah, an away win is is what the doctor ordered. Probably shouldn't have referenced the doctor after that recent incident with Saracens, but anyway, you know what I mean. Um, Morrison, um, Morrison, Munster could use a win. Is the point. Uh, that being said. The, the racing team is, is a pretty strong one. Again, um, these these teams, Leinster and Northampton, are not really, as I said, pulling any punches there. They are playing um, their top teams like like it seems to be the case with um, with racing. So you got Ariba in and Russell, 9 and 10. Uh, Chauvency is captain at 12. Akatawa is at 13. Imov is on one wing. Teddy Thomas on the other. And Doolan is at 15. So it's a pretty strong looking back line into the Fords, Benaroos, Shat, and Tami Afuna. Front row. Uh, it's some big big fellas, especially Tami Afuna. Palu and Bird and then Lore, LaRue, and uh Klassen make out the rest of the side. So that means the likes of Clemencheck, uh Machino, Donica Ryan, these guys are all relegated to the bench, even Gomez Sa. So it's a relatively stacked racing team, but this monster team is definitely uh, not a team of slouches. You got to kill Coin Scannel, 
And Archer front row, Jean Klein and Billy Holland. Second row, Amahani, who's captain at six, O'Donoghue and CJ Stunder uh, at number eight. So again, as terms of four packs go, I guess the KGs would go to, to Racing, but um, yeah, there's certainly a fair bit of beef in that monster pack as well. Uh, Connor Murray and JJ Hanrahan are nine and ten with um, Carberry off to have surgery. I think it was on his wrist. That's really unfortunate to use for both Munster and for Ireland. They really could have used his uh, touch at the minute, but Hanrahan, in his own right, is still, uh, you know, he's still a good player, so he's he's got the, the 10 jersey for this game. Uh, Scannell and Farrell in the midfield. Earls Conway, who's probably my favorite Irish winger of 2019. Uh, he's on the right wing, and then Mike Haley is at fullback. So, yeah. Tough job, but I mean, maybe Ospreys can do Munster a favor on the Saturday games, but um, yeah, Munster on 11 points could certainly use one more win. I mean, I'm not sure how the what the other possibilities are, but either way, uh, there's a, a few teams kind of there or thereabouts, so I think if they win here, Munster keep their, their fate in their own hands, uh, and if Racing win, then they probably go pretty well clear in the pool, but... Um, they haven't been yet. We'll see what happens. Uh, Racing are five-point favorites by Rugby Forecast and nine-point favorites at the bookies. So should be an interesting weekend of rugby. These games for me are all Monday morning games. So I would say I can pretty much guarantee I'm going to watch that one before work. And probably I'll watch them both at the same time so i'll have one on the telly and then I'll, I'll put one of these ones probably this one even though i'm wearing the leinster jersey i feel like that game could get could get messy so yeah i think there's more on the line for that one but anyway we'll see i'll, I'll decide i'll decide a bit later on there's a fly buzzing around i'm gonna see if i can chase him on out of here in a second but yeah uh, you guys let me know your thoughts. How do you think these Sunday games are going to go? We've still got the Saturday games first. It should be a bit of fun. But um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts. Talk to you again soon. See you later.